Welcome back. Today we are introducing you to a new segment called Health Talk, sponsored by UPMC. We'll address your health questions, highlight innovative research, and demonstrate the vital work your local doctors and nurses are doing to help the community. And today for our first segment, I am joined by Dr. George Mazzarrio. Help, help me out here. George Mazariegos. Mazariegos. We practiced this over and over again. Thank you so much. George is the Chief of Pediatric Transplantation at UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. We're so thankful to have you here. And you have been working at Children's for many years. Yes, Heather. It's been a fantastic uh, journey at Children's uh, because we've got to see the the tr amazing transformation that happens when children just get a chance to get the life that they were meant to have. And Transplant has helped so many of them right here in Pittsburgh. And it's fitting that you're joining us today because this is National Donate Life Month. Yes. And you get to see firsthand every day what this means to your patients and to children. It's amazing to be able to see what happens when a child who has, through no fault of their own, uh, begun life or had a segment of their life interrupted by a very, very drastic health challenge, whether it's in their heart, their lungs, their liver, or their kidneys. And transplantation uh, is really a miraculous way to help restore that and give, give children that opportunity again. So why is um, specifically organ, eye, and tissue donation so important? It's so important that we recognize that because so many children and adults are waiting for life-saving transplants right now. In the United States alone, there's over 100,000 uh, children and adults that are waiting a life-saving transplant today. And we're doing everything that we can at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh and at UPMC to get them the right organ that they need at the right time so that they can get back to their, to their journey. So uh, it's a National Pediatric Transplant Week right now. What can you tell us about your transplant team and what you all are doing? So proud of the team at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh because they are really focused on the child that they're caring for mm -hmm. and whatever that, uh, that means and whatever that child needs. Our focus is as a team, not only on transplant if it's needed, but also on alternative therapies, other approaches, current approaches so that we offer the right therapy if it includes transplant or other options as well for that child. And, and our teams re really include teams that do heart and thoracic, lung transplants, abdominal transplants, multi-organ transplants, sometimes working together to get the child the right uh, therapy that they require. You know, I've been able to do stories over the course of my decade plus here at KDKA, UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, and you get to see the remarkable care that goes in every single day for sick children in our area and those who travel from far away to come here specifically for the care. Uh, but my question really is, why would a child need a transplant? What, what could cause some of those issues that would require, not, maybe not even just one organ, but multiple organs? That's a great question, Heather. Children need transplants sometimes because of genetic conditions, other times because of metabolic conditions, and other times for injuries that happen over childhood uh, to their organs, whether it's the heart or the kidneys or the liver. And each of those conditions require the uh, expertise of our teams, multidisciplinary teams, surgeons, nursing professionals, allied health professionals, medical professionals to diagnose um, and then treat the condition appropriately. Um, but it's really a combination of um, underlying genetic conditions and mm -hmm. conditions that affect children, which are vastly different than conditions that, um, that afflict adults. And you mentioned a few of the different transplants that you offer. What are, what are some of them specifically? So the, we offer heart and lung transplantation, liver transplantation, both deceased from a deceased donor, which this is an opportunity this month to thank and recognize the organ donation process, but also living donors, uh, kidney and intestine transplants, which are more rare, but also uh, needed at times for children. Uh, tell us about um, the difference. Um, you can be a living donor, obviously you mentioned from people who have passed away uh, that their organs can be donated, but you can also be a living donor as well. Yes, a lot of people don't realize uh, the miraculous recovery of, uh, and regeneration of the liver that allows them to be a liver donor uh, to their loved one, to their, to their family member, their child, or a, a brother or a sister or loved one. 
um, and living donation for the liver has uh, been now recognized as being really a life-saving opportunity and we're the leading center in the nation for living donor liver transplantation uh, right here in Pittsburgh. That's fantastic. Uh, and that complements what uh, has been going on for some time with living donation of kidneys, which is also a wonderful way that has that have saved many, many lives. I, I'm just thinking about you in particular and how many lives you've saved by the surgeries you've performed and the transplants you've done. What do their lives look like for these children post-operation? That's a fantastic question. One of the more transformative things for me as a, as a physician, as a team member, has, is to see what happens to children after they get their transplant. Yeah. And we have seen just over and over the, the bl blossoming of their lives right before you. And it's not like it's changed them, it's really what they were meant to be. Yeah. But the, the healthy organ, the healthy liver, the healthy heart allows them to explore really who they are meant to be and who they were called to be. And it's wonderful to see um, their personalities uh, come out. It's wonderful to see their, their gifts and their, um, their talents be able to bloom after, after a surgery. Um, it's completely transformational. It, well, it gives them their shot at life. Exactly. It really does. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's it really, been my privilege, Heather. Thank it's really you. It's wonderful. And for more information, you can head to our website. We're going to link you up with all the information that you would need.